So we're doing a little bit of review on functions, uh, and today we're going to play a little functions bingo. So just a couple little uh, starting notes here. Let's say I wanted f of 3. You're going to fail this test if you can't do that. Everybody please figure out what f of 3 is real quick. Squat to side on a little corner of a piece of paper or a notability. I'd like to think you put in an empty spot like this, and I know a lot of you just did it in your head, and that's okay, but do you get that this is a good way to do it? And then what do I drop into the parentheses? Because it's, it's basically our parentheses was around the X, and an X is like an empty parentheses. So I drop in the 3. This gets done first. 9 times 3 is 27, plus 2 is 29. Raise your hand if you had 29. Awesome. They get harder, of course. Let's say, instead of giving you something simple to put in like a 3, what if I give you something weird to put in like a negative M? Write down what you think that answer comes out to. Once it's all simplified down, as in multiply it out, tell me what you think that comes up to. I'm going to pause for a second. Once you put in that negative m, what happened to it? Once you squared it, what happened? <laughs> negative times negative is positive, so it came out positive. 3m squared plus 2. Raise your hand if you had that one right. Okay, awesome. Now it gets more complicated, of course. This one's going to get, I'd say, a third of the class gets it wrong. Try to be in that top third of the class. F of n plus 1. I'm going to pause while you give that one a try. I'm just doing a little warm-up so that you can rock this bingo well and have fun. Because some kids are sitting there not knowing what to do. I'm going to get you started. 3 empty spots squared plus 2 is a smart way to go. Because then it'll just beg for something to put in the parentheses. You write that down and it'll remind you, oh yeah, I'm supposed to put something in here. N plus 1. And I hope you were smart enough to not just square both of these. You don't do that, do you? You go N plus 1 and N plus 1. And that's where I probably just lost a few of you. The next part is where I'm going to lose some more. This part becomes N squared plus 2N plus 1. You'd be amazed how many people think it's 2 because they think it's 1 plus 1, but it's 1 times 1. And then I times everything by 3. That's another place I'm going to lose a kid or two. 3n squared plus 6n plus, a lot of people forget to that last multiply, 3 plus this 2 that should be coming down here. Final, final answer, 3n squared plus 6n plus 5. Who got it all the way to the end? Perfect. That's more than two-thirds. Nice job. Okay. So, is it anything more difficult than that? Of course there is. Who can tell me a type of question I haven't done yet that's likely to be tested when we take the test, which is at this point planned for Friday. As in, we have one more review day tomorrow. Test Friday. What do you think is on there? Exactly, except I'm going to say 11. F of X equals 11. There isn't even any question there. It's just saying a statement. F of X is 11. The question would be, find X. So, whenever they do that, they aren't giving you X anymore. So what are they giving you? If you know it. Why? They're trying to find Y. Or, sorry, they're telling you Y. 
They didn't tell you the x, so they must have told you something. They told you the y. Y is 11. Put an 11 here, and you solve it, and there's a little twist to it. Again, I know the few people are not going to catch this, but give it a try. Try to figure out what x is, and then compare with the person next to you, and some of you are going to go, oh, crap. Because you'll see that they got it, and you forgot something. When I saw this at a garage sale, I just couldn't resist. It's the Snuggie. It's the official Snuggie. So, if you ever are just, like, having one of those days where you just need to, like, snuggle in your desk, because, you know, you're just having a really bad day, grab the Snuggie. The only thing you can't say is you can't go home and say, Mr. Server gave me a Snuggie today. Because that could go over really bad with anybody outside of school. All right. So here we go. If I put 11 there and I subtract 2 from both sides, do you get I'm going to have, I'm just going to kind of move this. 11 minus 2 is 9 equals 3x squared. Divide by 3, divide by 3, cancels. What is 9 divided by 3? Three? 3 equals x squared. And the people are like, wait a minute, I thought the answer was 3. Nope, not 3. Some people are going to be smart enough to have gone square root, square root, and then say the answer is square root of 3, but that's not exactly it. Caitlin, do you know what the secret is on this? Because the answer isn't just root 3. It's the absolute value of x. Did anybody remember the absolute value thing? Sweet. Then, did you remember that that gives you two answers? x and what? Sorry, x and x. And they are positive square root of 3 and negative square root of 3. Okay. That one was a tricky one for sure. All right, now I think we're ready to start the bingo review. Uh, for those following along at home, uh, I gave the kids a bingo card, and they wrote their answers. Let's see if I can find them here. And it's this one, yep. They wrote these answers in on the bingo card. I did tell them that that was actually supposed to be positive 24, otherwise it won't work, which is kind of a hint that, that might be important. Also, I told them that this empty spot, you should have a zero there, because uh, zero is one of the answers we'll be looking for. Okay. And last, I need to teach you something. I think some of you may have already picked this up, and some of you may not have. But... That's easy. What is it? Five. That's not easy because it's not a real answer, but there's an answer. I think I mentioned this in class, didn't I? Five I. Does that ring a bell? Remember that? All right. You're going to have to know how to do that. Okay, so let's do another one. What's the square root of negative four? Two I. And if you really understand what's going on, you should be able to tell me even what is I. I is officially, I know it's imaginary, but what does it equal? It equals something. Square root of negative 1. Very good. Because what's really happening here is you're breaking this into the square root of 4, which is simple. It's 2. And the square root of negative 1, which is I. That's why it's 2I. Okay? Okay. Now, lastly, did any of you pick the answer 2 plus the square root of 2? Did anybody put that on their board? All right. Only the people that put it on their board get to change that to 2 plus 2 root 3. Because if we get to that question... 
that's what the answer will be. It's a flaw in my answer key here. That's supposed to say 2 plus 2 root 3. No fair putting it on your sheet now if you didn't before. Okay. All right. So next, what's going to happen is I'm going to put up a problem. And it's actually, I gave you access to the file. Some of the teachers said, don't, don't let the kids have it. They'll work ahead. But I'm going to trust you not to work ahead. We're just going to do one problem, then we'll do it, and I'll give you a second to do it, and then we'll check it, and then we'll move to the next one. If you go ahead, all that would happen is, in theory, you could get bingo ahead of time, but if you've got a bingo ahead of time, you're going to have to tell me what your answers were, and some of them will be the ones that we haven't done yet, and then I will negate your bingo. Okay, so don't work ahead. It's not legal. It's not fair to the other players. Okay, so find the file on Schoology that says, I'm going to pause for a second while I find it here. There, it looks like this. And the first question for our bingo game here is this one. Now, it looks really complicated. It's got all that stuff over there. But do you get as soon as they said F of, they eliminated three-fourths of it? All you have left is you just use the F function, and you stick in a what? A 12. All right, go ahead and do that and find that answer. And once you have the answer, if you have it on your bingo sheet, circle it. I have a fabulous prize for our winner today. But if you go ahead and you get a bingo, you remember, you're going to have to read me what your answers are. And if you've got answers we haven't done yet, that'll be cheating. So don't do that. Just stay with us one question at a time. I know many of you are already done with this, and it'll go faster from here because I won't be talking so much. But do you get you were supposed to put a 12 in here? And then that's the square root of really 9. And then that's not 3 and negative 3. You've hopefully learned by now it's only one thing. Square root of 9 is 3. And then you add 2 and it makes 5. Raise your hand if you had 5. Awesome. Who actually had it on their sheet as well? Awesome. Then you circle it on your sheet. Don't scribble it out because at the end, if you get bingo, you're going to have to read me back what were the things that you got bingo with. You know what I mean? Okay. So, I'm going to put up some questions and then put on a little bit of music and we'll go through them uh, until we get a bingo. And then don't, like, tear up your sheet or anything unless somebody wins because then we're going to go for double bingo where you get two of them. Okay. All right. And here we go. I'll put up the next one of these first. There you go. Now, you don't have to have it on your iPad. You can just do it from the board if your eyes are good enough. And you wouldn't even have to scroll along, scroll along in yours. Can I name this movie? Footloose, very good. Did you get seven? Raise your hand if you had seven. Very nice. Then, if you have it on your board, circle it. And we're moving on. Mmm, graphing one. Done already? How'd you start, sir? 3 minus 5 and it makes negative 2, you are correct. So now you're really doing what? Finding a point. What did they give you, the x or the y of the point? They gave you the x. And if x is negative 2, you should have gone, oh, x equals negative 2 is a line that goes through here. So that must be the important spot. And I'm going to write it down. Negative 2 comma 4. Why did I do that? Because later, when the problems get harder, 
you got to remember, f of negative 2 is 4. And then see how that's a point buried in a function? Final answer is 4. If you had it on your board, circle it. Anybody happen to have three in a row so far? Incredibly lucky. Nice work. All right. Next one. Whoa, I went too fast. This one. For the next song, I'll be taking requests as long as they are school appropriate. Which probably means all of Eminem is out. Not the crunchy chocolate things, those are amazing, but the rapper tends to say a few naughty words. Okay, I hope you started with F of 5, because you start on the inside on Tough Problems. F of 5 means X is 5. If X is 5, that's here, and then that's there, and then that's F of 5 is equal to negative 4. That's a negative 4. What's the absolute value of negative 4? 4 plus F of negative 4 is where I put in the negative 4 right here, and I get that, and that is 5. Raise your hand if you had 9. You were right. If you didn't have 9, look and see where your mistake was. And you can all circle 9, even if you screwed up and didn't have the right answer. You now obviously know it is 9. Any questions about this one? Like, how did you get this? It's okay. Yes. The plus is from right here. It was in the problem. And f of negative 4 was 5. How would I get that? A said x is negative 4. So I went, here's x is negative 4, and it led me to that spot which was at 5. And you're welcome. Please ask when, you get, when you're not sure what's going on. That's awesome. People really do think that the kid who asks a lot of questions means that they're not smart. And I have my all-time question answerer champion was a girl. She was in this class, not your class right now, but she was taking the class you are. She asked more questions than anybody else had ever asked in the history of math, I swear. And it was okay. I answered every single one of them happily. And at the end of the year, she aced the final. She got every single question right on the final. So what does that prove? It proves if you ask questions, not that you're going to ace the final. But if you ask questions, it doesn't make you the kid who doesn't get it or the dumb kid you should ask. Far more kids sit there and not know what's going on and are just afraid to look dumb. You won't look dumb, you'll actually look kind of like you're a smart kid who cares. So, all right, moving on to this one. Off a chart, our first chart one. F of negative 2. Let's see if you remember how to do that. On the test, this would be a super easy one. It's called an R2 question. Like the gimmies, easy one. F's here. Two is here, and where they overlap is your answer, which was zero. Raise your hand if you had zero. Whoa, I must be doing something wrong. Everybody's saying, okay, good. There it is. Sorry. Moving on. Sorry. F and negative two, and it's 30. Very good. Okay. All right, moving on. Anybody getting close to a bingo? Ooh, a bunch of people. All right, good. Now remember, if they win, it doesn't mean you can't still win. You just have to, if they win, they're out. They can't win twice unless they get two whole new bingos before you get one. Okay, so that's not likely. So somebody wins, don't just like despair. You can still win also. All right, this one adds a twist. Definitely adds a little bit of challenge because these were hard for me the first time I saw these. I get them now. I hope you get them now. I'm going to pause for a second. Did they tell me X? 
What'd they tell me? Tell me why. Why is eight? What do you mean why? Well, I got to use the G function. That's important. But they did not tell me one of these numbers. They didn't. They told me that G was eight. That was this one, and that means that one's the answer. Zero. Raise your hand if you hit that one right. That's why we needed zero on the sheet because of this one. Anybody yet? One away from a bingo? Ooh, quite a few of you. All right. Next one. I swear I just went back in time there. Was that it? Okay. Find F of 15. Okay, let's see what we've got here. 15 goes in to this one. I'm having a strong sense of deja vu, but I get it. It's similar to another one that had a square root in it, but okay. Square root of 12. 2 plus square root of 12. But that's not on the sheet, Mr. Server. What's wrong? How do I do that? Raise your hand if you had that one right. All right, you remember me saying that we'd need that one, which meant we'd been smart to put on the sheet? Any questions? Okay, next. That one. This should go quick. At first, did anybody think, oh, square root of a negative, therefore no solution? That isn't a bad answer. It's just, I did just talk to you about this one. Two plus what? Two I. Raise your hand if you had that one right. Awesome. Anybody have it on the sheet? Considering I mentioned that one, I'm smart. Okay. All right. Anybody got a bingo yet? Who's one away? Quite a few people. All right. Have a fantastic price. Every now and then I enter the lottery just for fun so that if I could be the super wealthy teacher, wouldn't it be kind of fun to like make prizes like a brand new car? All right, moving on. Thought about, you know, like not everybody can drive yet. Maybe a scooter, maybe like a one of those uh, nice Honda scooters. Everybody could drive one of those. You know, if you're a billionaire, that means you have a thousand million. That's what a billion means. So a billionaire, if they're really a billionaire, they have a billion dollars. They could put suitcases full of a million dollars. They could have a thousand suitcases full of a million dollars. Isn't that amazing? All right. Hardest kind with the graphs. These kick a lot of kids' butts. Let me give you one little hint. If you can do this, I'm not saying this is the answer, but if you can do something like that, then these would have to be equal. Okay, so try to do something like that where you put f of something is negative 4. If you need a little bridge, that's your bridge. That's, that's how you get to the final answer. Who's actually got the final answer already? All right. What do you think I should do? How do I use this negative 4 then? Okay, which was, which was what? So you went to where y was negative 4, which is down here, and you went over to here. Yes, that's right. 
And it is f of 5. My subconscious filled it in for me. I did done this a different hour, and I guess I already knew that answer. Or I just got incredibly lucky when I put the 5 there. Do you get what I just did there? Do you get that this spot right here is f of 5 is negative 4? you got to get good at saying, oh, so you're saying there's a point 5, negative 4 on the graph. And then these are equal, and these are equal, so that means that equals that. So that means x plus 11 equals 5. And a lot of people are good at doing these in their head, and they can just say, oh, it's negative 6. Raise your hand if you had negative 6. You're right. How many is... Oh, is it a bingo? All right. Read me the ones that you think were right answers, and we will check you. Four. Anybody verify 4? Okay, what else? Okay. 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 All right, congratulations, we have our first winner. But remember, keep your board as is, because now if you can add, and you can get a bingo now, but you'd have to get two bingos to win again. All right. It's a good question. At this point, there are so many people that are close to uh, one bingo, but our time is kind of like flying by. So I'm just going to say we're not going to have to go for two bingos. You still only need one bingo to win except for the person who already won, which means they have to get two. All right, so let's move on. You never know. Don't count yourself out. Okay, this one. It's another one of those tricky graph ones. This practice is really going to help you when we take the test. f of something is 5, that helps you focus on the y is 5 part. See, I don't worry about all this stuff until later. I figure out f of what is 5. Hmm. So I've got y is 5, that's up here, and that's the line. Oh, there it is. There's my spot. f of what? f of negative 4 is 5. So f of negative 4 is 5, and so that's negative 4. 20 minus x equals negative 4. Help me, save me some time. What's the answer? 24. Raise your hand if you had 24 on that one. You were right. Did anybody just say it a bingo there? Holy cow. One, two, three, four of you. All right, read yours. Yep. Yep. Was three on there? Hold on. Was three on there? Oh, three. Okay. I was like, I didn't remember three. Okay, keep going. Yep. That is correct. Okay, what's yours? Yep. 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 And 30? Was 30 one of the answers? Okay. All right. Thank you. Yep. 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 All right. That's it. All right. That's as many winners as I can afford. I am not a billionaire. So uh, I am going to stop the game at this point. Now, I think you get the idea. If you wanted to go further in the sheet, you could. And the answers are in that answer bank if you wanted to. Now, I know some kids are the overachiever types. I bet a lot of you actually are. And if you are overachiever enough that you really want to get a head start, tomorrow I'm going to sign the whole review worksheet. I can't assign it today, but I'm assigning it tomorrow. And it's due Friday. So if you want, you could go one day ahead of today. Go look at the homework. That's your homework. And if you wanted to, you could get a start on it early if you wanted to, but you don't have to. Okay? And then what's happening Friday? Test. The test. All right. Yes? There's nothing new today except working ahead if you want to on tomorrow night's homework. All right. That's all I got for you for today.